Welcome to Hengus Gaming! Guess who I am? Today, Jedi Survivor! We'll have a quick look at the game, look at FSR quality levels, have a detailed look at some graphical settings in the game, and I found a fix for some white glitches. Let's dive right into it! I have a PlayStation 5, but I wanted a PC as well for a few reasons. One of them is to play games and decide for myself what graphical options I want to use, so not just choose between performance mode or a graphical mode. I want to fiddle with the settings and see for myself how we can run the game. Well, waiting for the game to start. Now I know shading compilation stutter is something PC gamers have to cope with, but to get this optimization every single time I start a game, Often nothing even has changed on the system. Now for me this took about 49 seconds, which is a little bit of time but nothing I can't handle. I do however think it would have been nice to turn this optimization off, because now I every single time have to wait 49 seconds, which is often not even needed because nothing has changed. And for me it's 49 seconds, I can imagine if you even have to wait longer, it's really a shame. However, no shading compilation stutters during the game, or at least not really noticeable for me, so that's great. Before we dive into all the settings, I would like to do a quick shout out to the controller support in this game. I use my PS5 DualSense for this game, and although the adaptive triggers, the, the pushback on the L2 and R2 triggers, are not supported, the game does a very good job with the haptic feedback. Coming from Diablo 4, which has none of this, this love for the PS5 DualSense uh, we get on the PC in this game is really something I like. In the meantime, the footage we're looking at is from playing the game on epic settings with ray tracing turned on and FSR in performance mode. And with those settings, the game runs in 4K at a steady 60 FPS, which is what I want. I wouldn't get any better on my PlayStation 5. I see some frame time jitters here and there, which could indicate that I'm having compilation stutter perhaps or something else. But I don't really notice this when I'm playing, so I don't mind. Now let's start with comparing some settings and options. First off, epic settings, FSR disabled, ray tracing on, getting about 23 FPS, which is really not playable. Looking great though, but let's set FSR to quality mode and now we get around 30 FPS. But I would like to run the game at 60, so let's try FSR in performance mode. And turning FSR to performance mode, we do make it to 60 FPS on epic settings and ray tracing enabled. Nice! By the way, I record this footage with OBS Studio, which probably cost me a few FPS as well, but shouldn't interfere when comparing settings and differences, of course. Now, since FSR, or any upscaling method for that matter, renders the game at a lower resolution and then scales it back up to, in my case, 4K, I was wondering how the game would run when running at 1440p instead of 4K. Now the game looks a lot less sharp at 1440p and performance is about 5% lower, so I stick with the higher resolution and FSR enabled in performance mode, I would say. Looking at them side by side, I don't really notice a quality loss between no FSR or FSR set to quality mode. I do think FSR performance mode looks a little bit less crisp, but still way better than 1440p. And keep the performance win in mind with FSR enabled. For the rest of the tests, I will turn off FSR just to get a good base performance indication and make my computer sweat a bit more. I think I repositioned Cal a bit, because now I get a solid 32 FPS, and just a moment ago that was 23. But we'll have a look at the ray tracing currently turned on, but let's see what the game looks like when we turn this off. And we'll see right away why I think you should leave ray tracing on. See that weird block in the reflection when Cal moves? I think you want to turn ray tracing on, even if it's just to not have those kind of glitches. Turning ray tracing off, however, does give a nice FPS boost of about 6%. So if you don't really care about ray tracing and you are in need of some extra FPS, you could turn it off. I will leave it on, however. 
And here's another small example of ray tracing enabled versus disabled in the toilets in the cantina. I just love to get a little more detail in those mirrors. But also this scene, where I think the reflections in the water really make a difference. And there's also this strange reflection block without ray tracing again. With ray tracing on, you see the cracks in the wall reflect in the water, and also the rocks or ground in the water before Cal stands out a bit more because of the coloring of the water. Yeah, I just like ray tracing, I guess. Okay, you've heard enough about ray tracing from me now. Let's have a look at other graphical settings. And let's start off with the graphics quality comparison. This setting just changes all other graphical settings except ray tracing. Haha, <laughs> managed to slip in ray tracing one more time. We'll start off with the epic preset. FSR off, looking great, running at 32 FPS. We'll switch to the high preset. We get a frame increase of about 6% again. And the main thing I find noticeable is the decrease in vegetation. Otherwise, I don't think it looks all that bad. And for that 6% performance increase, could be worth it. Now, look at the village on the left. There will be a lighting change when we set the settings to medium preset. And let's do that right away then. So, as mentioned, you'll notice that the village has no light shining on it anymore. And also does the area before the river starts to feel a bit empty. FPS increase of about 11% is quite something, however I wonder if you aren't starting to trade in too much of the visual quality. Going even further down to low, you'll notice that the ground in front of the river is nearly empty now. Global warming killed off every plant I guess. Other than that I don't see that many changes. Frame rate's gone up about 7% however, but I don't think you want to play in this state. Yeah, if you otherwise can't play the game, okay. Having seen these presets, I think we will want to have most settings on high or at least medium, but let's have a look. Starting with shadow quality. From left to right, we have low quality to epic shadow quality, where I think medium actually looks okay here. Low does not look really bad, to be honest, but it's a bit more jittery. Epic shadows are really sharp, but I think medium should work for our optimized settings. I found out, however, that the quality setting also takes care of a bit of shadow distance. Here you'll see shadow quality on the low setting, and just below that platform of the building, as well as the shadows on the mountains in the back, really pop in when walking by. Where I always think pop-in is a bad gaming experience. I want as less pop-in as possible. Switching the quality to medium, the pop-in of the shadow below the platform is reduced so much I would call it acceptable. On the mountains in the back, however, shadows still pop in quite much. But switching to high or even epic doesn't really seem to fix that pop-in, so we'll have to live with that. For now we'll just go with medium and we'll measure the whole increase FPS later on when we have our optimized settings complete. Next we'll have a little test of the view distance, but as mentioned I am almost allergic to pop in. You can already guess we'll leave this setting at epic. So the view distance renders objects more closely or further away. I only tested low versus epic, but I have trouble measuring the exact FPS win. But looking at the graph I don't think it matters much, so we'll keep this setting as epic as expected. Texture quality is up next. Looking at the images side by side, you'll notice small differences in the Cushing leaning against the table and the wooden bars of the bench. But the differences are very small. I don't notice any difference in VRAM use or anything, so for this setting we'll leave it at Epic as well. I would expect texture quality to impact VRAM, so if you have issues and you can check your VRAM usage, try lowering these, it could perhaps help. We'll have a look at visual effects next. I'm putting them side by side right away, and again going from left to right we have low to epic settings. 
And here I find the biggest difference between high and medium again. The waterfall has a little bit less individual water streams looking from epic to high, but not that noticeable. Going to medium, the water really starts to feel a bit less full, also making the waterfall look a bit less grand, less like a force of nature. And seeing this, the same could perhaps happen to flames or effects of grenades or something. So we'll leave this setting at high. Again, however, frame weight wise, this doesn't have such a big impact at all. But I guess every little bit helps. And that brings us to our optimized settings. We'll measure against Epic preset first. Keep FSR off, although I would really want to advise you to enable FSR in performance mode since it makes such a big difference in your FPS count and perhaps you don't even need optimized settings. So, some in-game time went by and it's midday now and this beautiful day runs at about 31 FPS on Epic, FSR off, ray tracing enabled. Now, going for the optimized settings. As discussed, we'll leave shadow quality to medium Anti-aliasing can be set to off. I know DLSS uses its own kind of AA. I think FSR does this as well. Texture quality will leave to epic. Visual effects to high, as we saw earlier on as well. And now post-processing, I put this to medium. Haven't had a very good look at this, but I noticed when turning this off, in the settings menu you lose depth of field and we want that depth of field so therefore leaving this to medium. Now I constantly use field of view set to wider since it gives a bit more wide angle and better overview of the landscapes which I like better. And with these settings applied we get an FPS of 35-36 which is an improvement of about 12%. In my case, this could be enough to play at a steady 30 FPS without FSR, if you don't like FSR for some reason. But I prefer to play at 60 FPS, so I will use FSR in performance mode, so I am certain I don't get any slowdowns during gameplay. And so that's it, but I have one more thing. Playing with ray tracing on, I noticed some white flashes, often in caves when turning the camera. And I'll show you here, when turning around you'll see this white, or blue in this case I guess, flashes. Now apparently I'm not the only one, and someone made a mod to fix this. I want this fixed, so let's get this mod. Go to nexusmods.com, your favorite modding site. To be honest, this is the first mod I've ever downloaded here, but still. You can search for this mod, but I'll link it down below in the description. You do need an account, so create one. I've done this already. Download the mod, extract the mod with WinRAR. This is freely available, just Google for WinRAR, but again, I'll place a link down below. Once extracted, get the dot pak file and place it in your game directory as shown right here. When I made this video I had already placed this file in this directory. I needed to test the mod, right? So that's why I get the question to overwrite file, but you shouldn't get that question. The file is pasted and we can fire up the game again. By the power of video editing we'll speed up things. And yes, of course, wait for the optimization. And continue to the same spot as we were just now. Turn the camera and gone are the white, or in my case blue, flashes. This is the only place I tested this mod, so I hope it's gone everywhere and I don't get an angry YouTube mob burning down my house. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching, liking and subscribing. Um, next time we'll have a look at Cyberpunk 2077, A, because I love the game, B, because I'm very curious how my PC, my new PC, will handle this game, and C, I think it's nice to perhaps revisit it when Phantom Liberty Expansion comes out in a few months. So, till next time, how do?